Good morning, everybody. I went to an event just a few days ago in Manchester called As Above and So Below, and there were indigenous speakers from different parts of the world saying their piece. And what I want to talk to you about is what the man from the Dogon tribe from the country Burkina Faso shared with us, because it has a really deep effect on me. So the first thing he wanted us to know is that he attempted to come to this country together with his tribal elders, but all his tribal elders were actually refused permission to get a visa to come to Britain, and the reason why is because they didn't have bank accounts. So he told us a little bit about his life out there, which is that none of the elders had bank accounts because they didn't need any bank accounts because they didn't need money. That's because everything they needed they grew for themselves, so the cotton that their clothes were woven from, all the food that they ate, they didn't need money, so they didn't have bank accounts. And then he went on to tell us their message, which is as follows. But before he did that, he also wanted to point out that the system looks down upon black people for not having bank accounts and not having money. And so this is the first thing he says. Every person has something to admire. We all question ourselves about the stars, the galaxies, and how we came to be here. When you can't be a star in the sky, be a firefly on earth. Fly free. He then said that his father gave, was given permission by the tribal elders 25 years ago to share the knowledge of the Dogon with the West. His father died in 2008, so the tradition states that the eldest son gets to carry on the work, which is him. And that's how come he was there talking to us. And his main message was to do with the spirits of the ancestors. So when a person dies, their spirit continues to exist, as most of us know. And this is what we call the spirits of the ancestors. Modern spirituality forgets to teach about the spirits of the ancestors. We are all a product of our ancestors. Everybody has a dead relative. It hurts so much to see a human being taking it for granted those who sacrifice their lives to give you life, to teach you what everything is. Every dead relative would love to be thought about, remembered and blessed by you. They gave you life. It is very painful to be ignored. Most people never give their dead relatives a moment's thought. Now just think about this. Supposing you go into a room full of your friends and they're all chatting away and they carry on chatting away and they completely ignore your existence as if you simply are not there. Imagine how that would feel. They would feel pretty hurtful, wouldn't it? So what he's saying is there is no such thing as death in the conventional sense because when a person dies their spirit continues. Now most of us know this, and this is generally accepted common knowledge in most parts of the world. And also what's very much common knowledge in most cultures is this idea of the ancestors. And you can go to the south of Europe, to Africa, you can go to the east, to Asia, you can go to most parts where you can go to Australia, to the Aboriginal cultures, you can go to South America, pretty much everywhere you go in the world except for the West, there is this view that the ancestors are to be respected and venerated. But I felt that what this guy was doing, and here's a photograph of him, this guy was taking it even further and was saying, the fact that you're alive, so supposing you're an orphan, you don't have any parents that you know about, you don't even know any members of your family, what he's saying is still you have ancestors, still you were conceived, still you were given birth to. And that's the point he's making. So let me go back to what he's saying here. Every dead relative would love to be thought about, remembered and blessed. They gave you life. It's very painful to be ignored. Most people never give their dead relatives a moment's thought. 
If you don't know how to honour your ancestors, how can you see yourself as spiritual? To be able to survive, you must honour your roots just like the tree. What part of your body is not coming from your mother and your father? And here's the one that really struck home with everyone in the room. I could feel it when he said these words. All of this destruction, disconnection and suffering is coming from this ignorance. And this is the message of one African man, but it's also the message of the Dogon tribe, and I felt it was a message of indigenous people all over the world, that the suffering and the destruction from this Western disconnect is coming from the fact that we no longer give our ancestors a moment's thought. So I put a post up on Facebook a couple of days after this, and most of the posts were very complimentary, and there was one of them that wasn't. And so what I want to do is I want to talk about this subject in a bit more detail. Now, I'm going to talk about someone I know and love, and a little bit about this person's life. So, when this person was still a child, a teenager, mother and father were having such difficulty with this person expressing themselves, being a free human being, and having a very strong will, that the person's mother arranged for the person to be incarcerated into, in a mental institution. And after less than 12 months, the people in the mental institution were having a, such a struggle with this person because their will is so strong and they were actually disrupting the regime in the mental institution that they said, sorry, we're going to discharge her. So she was discharged. So her mother arranged for a taxi to arrive at this mental institution and to pick her up and take her to the airport where an aeroplane ticket had been arranged and she was then flown from her country to the other side of the world to a completely different country and there she was taken by distant relatives and looked after there. Now the reason I'm giving you this as an example because this is something that when I heard about it, I became furiously angry. I thought, how could you possibly do this to your child? It seems like the worst thing you could do to your child is actually reject your child to the extent of incarcerating the child in a mental institution. And then when the mental institution can't cope, to actually send the child to the other side of the world. It seems like the kind of thing that's such a difficult thing that surely this must be unforgivable. And as Russell Brand in his book Revolution says, forgive everybody for everything. So I was receiving a powerful lesson here because actually this person I was staying with and her mother was living with her in the same place, they were sharing a flat together. And what she did is she looked after her mother with great love and great respect. She cooked her mother's meals, she washed her mother's clothes and she looked after her mother in all manner of ways and every night when it was time for her mother to go to bed she washed her face and she was demonstrating something to me which is incredibly important this forgive everyone for everything no matter how heinous the crime appears to be you forgive now what I didn't understand at the time but what this man from Burkina Faso from the Dogon tribe was showing me was this if all your parent ever did was to conceive you, if all your father ever did was to deposit his sperm in your mother's vagina, if all your mother ever did was to give birth to you out of her vagina, then you still have a great reason to be respectful and appreciative of your parent, your parents. And so your parents whether they are alive or whether they've passed over, they are your ancestors. So no matter what terrible things they may have done to you while they were alive, that is the fundamental gift that they gave you, that you are being invited to respect them for. So supposing you are an orphan and you don't even know either of your parents, you know nothing about them whatsoever, still they gave you the gift of life. And this is what the guy was saying. He was saying that what all your ancestors have done is not just your mother and your father, but also their mother, their father, all the way through the ancestral line. What these people have done 
and many of them have indeed given great sacrifice because many people's lives in the past were hard. If I think about people in the United Kingdom in the 1930s, their lives, many of them, especially the working classes, their lives were terribly hard. They struggled to even find enough food to keep themselves alive. They struggled to find the money to pay the rent for their homes that they are living in. Really harsh, difficult, challenging lives. The lives, in a sense, of wage slaves. Well, these people gave so much so that you could be alive. And so what he's saying is, it's such a simple thing. At some point in your day, just pause and reflect and think about all those of your ancestors that struggled and did what they did to give you life. And if you have an ancestor that gave you a terrible time that maybe abused you horribly, then the normal place to go as a Westerner is to go into the anger and to go into the rage about how bad you were treated. Well, even in that case, that person still gave you life. And that is the priceless gift that we've all been given. And so what are you saying? Is you saying the disconnect, the disruption, the destruction in Western society, all the violence, all the horrors, and even worse, the destruction of the ecosystems of the environment can all be laid at the door of us failing to recognize that we owe our answers this great debt of gratitude for our life, for our very existence. So supposing you got on really badly with your mother all your life, still the opportunity here is to thank that person for the gift that they gave you, and the gift is the gift of life. So I've had a few days to consider this and to meditate on it, and that's what I feel the guy was saying, that this is the gift that we've all been given. So rather like if you walk into a crowded room with all your best friends and they ignore you completely, imagine the hurt, imagine the pain that these beings do exist and they look down upon this planet Earth and they discover that none of their descendants pay any attention to them whatsoever. So traditionally in indigenous societies, particularly in Asia, what people would do is they would create a shrine for their ancestors. And there's actually a time in my life I did this. I was moved to do this, I was given information, and I did this for a period of time, I actually asked from my parents particular items from their family line, and I put them onto the shrine, and I used to give thanks to them on a daily basis, and like so many things in life, it's a habit I took up, it's a habit I forgot, because I live in a society where nobody does this, no one has any respect or veneration, or simple appreciation for the fact that an ancestors gave us life. It was listening to this man that really, it hit home for me for the first time. I really grasped what I was doing then. And so, every moment you can, just take a moment just to think of your ancestors for what they gave you. They gave you the gift of life. And so I want to go into forgiveness because Russell Brand in his book Revolution says, forgive everyone for everything. So it's an opportunity that if our ancestors treated us badly, abusers gave us a horrible time, made our lives hell. The first thing we can do is we can forgive our ancestors for what they did to us in terms of anything they did to harm us, like this friend I'm talking about, mother incarcerated in a mental institution in the flu of the other side of the world. That seems like a harsh thing, but what she was demonstrating was the power of forgiveness. She's forgiven her mother to the extent that she was caring for a mother who had a neurological disorder that she couldn't care for herself anymore. So the first thing we do is we forgive our ancestors for anything or everything they ever did to us. And then the funny if we forgive ourselves, and we forgive ourselves for the arrogance of forgetting that they gave us life, for the foolishness of not giving them the gratitude and the respect that they deserve because you wouldn't be here if it wasn't for your ancestors, for all of them, for all the way down the ancestral line. It took all of them to give you life, and that is the precious gift that we all share. And the final point, the point that I had never had revealed to me before until this talk in Manchester at St John's Hall, and thank you very much, Vicky Sinclair, for organising this event, is the fact that, yes, they gave us life. Yes, 
we can appreciate that. But even more, the destruction of the West, the organizations of these multinational corporations which are patenting seeds and causing people to use terribly harmful chemicals to grow things, all the destruction of the environment, the fact there's an organization called TTIP which is now trying to make chemicals which are so harmful they are going to kill bees. They want to make them legal again, or they've been illegal in many countries for a long time. They want to make them legal again, they want to poison the bees. Without the bees there are no crops, without the, without the crops we die. We live in a completely insane society. How is this possible? Well, what the guy from the Dogon tribe was saying, and I'm sorry I don't remember his name, it was a name I couldn't physically grasp, so that's why, again, let me show you once again the photograph of this man passing his information from his elders. He's saying, all the disconnect, all the suffering, all the insanity of the West comes from the fact that we don't appreciate our ancestors. So that's a completely new thought for me. So thank you very much to my mother and to my father and to all my ancestors for giving me life. Thank you.